Hi, welcome to my booktube. I am here today to share with you an absolutely incredible, beautifully written book by Marguerite Henry, King of the Wind, 1949. It won the Excellence, the Newbery Award for Excellence in American Children's Literature, 1949. You may be familiar with Marguerite Henry. I did another review of one of her books a few months back. She wrote Misty of Chincoteague. If you are a horse lover, you likely are familiar with some of her books, very popular in the 70s and 80s when I was growing up. She has books like Black Gold, Stormy Misty's Full, and they come in these really nice flat hardback editions. And so you can find some of her books in these sort of paperback editions. Justin Morgan Had a Horse, Born to Trot. And you can also find them recently more released in paperback, such as Sea Star. Some of them are scholastic. So King of the Wind, I just finished this yesterday, and I have to, and I read it in two days. The book is absolutely stunning, and it's historical fiction, the story of the Godolphin Arabian. And it is, I'll tell you a little bit about the plot. Let me show you the inside of the book. And this was the, the, I think she won an award for two books, and this was one of them. And of course, she was, Margaret Henry, she was very careful to, before she started writing her horse book, she wanted to have the absolute best illustrator she could possibly find that can, that could do the best representation of the soul and spirit of the horse. And she chose Wesley Dennis to be her illustrator, who did most of her illustrations. And if you go to YouTube, you can watch a few documentaries about this. So the horses that are drawn in her books are all incredibly beautiful, and the drawings are sort of black and white, of course, in all of her books. And this particular story starts in Africa, in Morocco, with a little boy who is mute and cannot speak. His name is Agba, and he is a stable boy, and he works in as a property of the sultan. And he witnesses the birth. He has the, there's this horse that he loves more than anything. And she bears this, uh, you know, a newborn horse, a foal. And then the mother dies. The, the, they call it the dam of the, the pony dies. And he falls in love with this baby horse who has this sort of marking on its chest that's, that's sort of symbolic to their religion. It's going to be some powerful and magical, mystical, brilliant horse, I guess. And um, so he loves and takes care of this pony as it gets older and older. And then the sultan calls six boys, with him included, to accompany the, the, the pony, which is, becomes, I think, two years old by then, and several other Arabians to go to Europe by ship to travel to France to be gifts to the king. So, and then they take the journey, but it doesn't go as planned. Um, the boy and the horses, stable boys are all abused and starved on the ship on the journey to France. And when they arrive at the palace, they are turned away by the king because they're not these just absolutely impressive African Arabians, which, you know, they want, which was, it was supposed to be a gift from the Sultan to the King of France to, um, show how wonderful and powerful he is, the sultan keeps saying, and to sort of um, introduce these these African horses, these Arabians, into Europe. And so the king turns them away. He doesn't want them because they're all, you can actually see the ribs on the horses. They're all starving. They kind of look like what they call um, fading nags. And um, so they get turned away and they end up in several different places throughout the story. And what's absolutely touching is that the boy can't speak and now he, he's in another country anyway. He doesn't necessarily even understand the language. And the horse gets, you know, t bought by someone to be like a, a sort of a slave, like a cart horse, a buggy horse. And then he get, you know, he, they go from owner to owner and own, to owner. And the boy, is, the boy, sometimes he can go along, sometimes he can't. And when he can't, he tries to get reunited with his horse. And here's the back of it. And eventually... Um, and what, one thing I don't like is the horse is portrayed, this beautiful horse uh, whose name is Sham, he's portrayed in the drawings and description as the skeletal starving horse. And you see these the beautiful, normal beautiful drawings, you can actually see the ribs in some of the drawings. And so, you know, I'm very sensitive to things like animal abuse, but I mean, it is... It is what it is. And so they go through this journey. They end up in England, uh, being given to another owner that buys them. So um, 
it's really just this beautiful journey about a boy and his horse and a new world sort of on, on this journey and their abuse and their resilience to the abuse and in the end um an earl that has this these beautiful grounds ends up taking the horse and the horse the horse falls in love with a beautiful white female horse and they have a baby and the earl they they realize that um Actually, at one point, he, the boy runs away and lives in the woods or something for two years with the horse. And then the Earl tracks them down because the white horse that was left behind ends up producing this beautiful baby. And they realize this can be the new line of thoroughbreds um, into England. All that came from, you know, the Godolphin Arabian. So it has a happy ending. Absolutely. I actually cried when I read the endings. Happy and sad. Um, beautiful sham dies at the end. It's a 30-year period. But... I have to read you the last page, and he dies at a, at a ripe old age, um, but the boy ends up leaving England to go back to, to Morocco at the age of, I guess he's like 35 by then, because he's maybe 7 or 10 when, when it starts, and when he goes, when his horse dies, after having lived a long life, where it still is buried at this castle, where there apparently is in unmarked stone uh, of the real horse that this is based on. Um, um, would not the center of Paris and the king's cook and the mistress of the Red Lion Inn have laughed in scorn at the idea of shams attaining such notary fame? How they would have held their sides had anyone predicted that man o' war, the greatest racer of his time, would owe his vitality to the fiery little horse that came from Morocco. And uh, at the beginning of the book, you see Man of War, who is a, the modern horse, the descendant of Sham. So, and then it goes back in time and tells the story of the introduction of these horses into Europe. The Earl of Godolphin, however, would not have been surprised in the least. Perhaps he felt that some such honor would come to his horse. For when the Earl grew to be an old, old man, he liked to take his visitors to Sham's grave. And when they heard why the tablet bore no marking, he would say, I shall trouble you with a very short answer. It needs none. You see, he would smile, a faraway look in his eye. The golden bay was tended all his life by a boy who could not speak. He left for Morocco the night that his horse died. Without any words at all, he made me understand that his mission in life was fulfilled. So I have kept the tablet clean. It is for you and for me to write here our thoughts and tributes to the king of the wind and the slim brown horse boy who loved him. And here's a picture here, and it says, <clears throat> a, a note, after the Earl's death, the Godolphin Arabian's name and the year of his death was inscribed on the tombstone. Time, however, is erasing the letters, as if in respect to the Earl's original wishes. So, <clears throat> it's a true story, but with fictional aspects, of course. But I think it's an absolutely beautiful book, beautiful story about a boy and his horse. It's very touching, a lot of wonderful historical descriptions and settings. Absolutely love Marguerite Henry, if you love horses. I definitely recommend this book for all ages, and of course it can mostly be appreciated by older adolescents or the adult, but definitely recommended. Enjoy.